Tech stocks are struggling to keep their head above water right now after a pair of high-profile misses. Cisco under pressure as its orders are declining. Palo Alto, similar situation except with its billings. The key theme here is we're concerned that companies are reining back on spending plans, especially when it comes to making tech purchases. Nevertheless, our next guest still holds tech as a high conviction idea. Michael Landsberg, chief investment officer at Landsberg Bennett Private Wealth, joins us. So you can spin the narrative uh, any which way you like, uh, depending on what earnings stories are out. Some days things are great in tech. Today, we've got these two high profile examples in Cisco and Palo Alto that maybe scratches a little bit of anxiety that, OK, if things start to slow down, companies won't buy as much from these tech companies. Well, that's certainly a possibility. I, I look at, there's certain areas of tech that are more essential than others. Obviously, cybersecurity is a good spot that is really an essential, but it always goes back to earnings. I kind of take, uh, you know, the narratives are definitely, uh, Wall Street's very good at, at telling stories and selling stories. You know, uh, NASDAQ earnings year over year up 20%. That's what we're looking at. And if I look at the S&P, this is the first quarter we had positive earnings in the S&P year over year in four quarters. And it's barely positive. So the growth is still coming from the NASDAQ names and earnings. Um, yeah, there's a lot of great stories in, in NASDAQ land, but the earnings are there. So we, we want to kind of stay where the earnings are, considering there's going to be a, a slowdown kind of across you know, most stock markets globally. Finding growth is going to be tough. And when you can find it, you want to pay up for it. And I guess that's the question. You've already got the tech sector on the S&P 500 um, that, that's trading close to uh, all-time highs, hit a fresh all-time high this week. So putting new dollars to work, I mean, what's the thesis here? Well, uh, the thesis in, in, in tech is I am trying to look for other things that haven't had the big move that some of the kind of the big names have had. No question about it. You know, names like NVIDIA have had great runs. But if I think you look two or three years out, they're clearly one of the AI winners. I think what's happened in tech has been a lot of things have gone up. And what's the real story in AI, for example? How many of them are really going to make any money? And I think that's really where you've got to kind of separate the wheat from the chaff is what's going to make money. So we're still um, interested in those companies that have earnings growth you know, over the next 12, 24, 36 months. But we're also looking at other parts of the market that haven't had the big move because there are some growth stories that are out there that just haven't had the move that tech has had. Like what? So, for example, I, we're fans of healthcare. Um, you know, and, and continues, for example, a name like United Healthcare. Mm. Um, you know, one out of five Americans has uh, United Healthcare as their health provider, their health insurance provider. They continue to make money, long standing growth, long standing dividend growth. So it's attractive, hasn't really moved this year, primarily because of the concern around uh, kind of the GLP reimbursements. You know, we saw actually Lilly announce those that their drug those, was approved. Uh, like uh, weight loss drugs, oh, like those. Oh, Zempic and Wagovi. Yeah. Uh, which we own those and we love those stocks. But one of the reasons that we like United Health Group is I think it's been unfairly beaten up because people are worried it's going to cost them zillions and zillions of dollars. What I found over the years is I don't want to ever really bet against insurance companies. They always seem to do well. And uh, United Health being probably the best in breed. I wonder if uh, a company like Monster Beverage, some of these like food companies, they also got swept up in concerns about how big um, this this was going to be and whether, well, if people don't have cravings anymore, they're not going to go to McDonald's. They're not going to get, you know, their energy drinks. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think it got a little overblown. Uh, one of the reasons that we like Monster is Monster's distribution network is through Coca-Cola and Monster's everywhere. And as we know, most people uh, around the world um, need something in the day because they don't sleep well. They don't sleep enough, they're generally tired, and something like that's a little bit of a pick-me-up. I think they've all gotten swept up a little bit in this, you know, this, this, this weight loss thing that's gonna change everybody. But I think the behavior is, you still need to pick me up. Monster happens to be a thing that will pick you up when you're driving, no matter where you are in the free world, there seems to be a monster um, because there's Coca-Cola everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we like that business as well, long-standing growth as well. So we think that will continue to do well. One, one place you're not sort of hunting for bargains is real estate. Um, why not? And what would it take you to feel like, okay, now's a good time to step in? And I think we want to be specific around, you know, some of the office building spaces. I mean, if we think five to seven years ago, we had very low interest rates. People bought these, you know, five to seven year balloons on, on properties with 100% occupancy in most major cities. COVID happened, work from homes happened. And yes, we're not working from home as much, but a lot of people aren't going back to work. 
So there's a lot of space, a lot of office space everywhere. And that's the concern. I just don't think it's played out yet where we've seen refinancings where people have gone from two to 7%. And now they're realizing they can't make payments. I think I want to avoid real estate for certain. I also want to avoid banks that are highly levered to commercial real estate because you saw it in San Francisco, there was a hotel. Basically the, the management company turned the keys over back to the bank because they couldn't make the payments, not enough occupancy. I think you're going to see that happen. So, you know, regional banks, banks exposed to a high level of real estate lending and anybody in the office building space. I think not only do we want to avoid them, we've been short real estate and we'll continue to be short um, real estate until we see kind of a scenario where, you know what? Okay, now there's a bottom. I just don't think there's been enough pain yet in commercial real estate. All right.